So I'm out running some work-related errands and I get uh, a tip that there is a K&M Spider uh, in a driveway in this neighborhood. So uh, I'm driving around to see if I can find it and who knows, maybe even talk to the owner. Haven't had a chance to spend much time talking with other uh, spider drivers. So this could be uh, interesting. I bet you're the spider driver. Really? How are you? <laughs> yes, we know each other. <laughs> I video everything for the for my little YouTube channel. All right. Well, I should explain our background. First of all, we know each other and we used to work for the same organization for quite a few years. It's been Probably in the early 90s we first met and worked together and then you trucked off to Arizona after you retired and That's I haven't seen right. you in since till today. Uh, and you haven't changed a bit. Just a few years older. Our birthday campus. So anyway, Terry uh, comes to Virginia Beach. I see her on Facebook and I see that she's a spider driver. And I went, ooh, spider driver. So I mentioned that we should do this, this interview and she said, sure. So here we are. So, why don't we start at the top? What got you interested in riding motorcycles, period? Well, I ended up with uh, a, what I thought was a lifetime partner, and he has been riding for about 40 years. And he came to Virginia Beach in 2007, and I went on my first ride on the back of a motorcycle. And it was quite hilarious because every time he would hit the brakes, my helmet would fly forward and bang against the back of his helmet. So my first ride was actually out to Knott's Island and I fell in love with it. So I went on my first, my first four years riding with him. Actually, uh, he left here to go back to Arizona. Uh, we had ended up together and he went back to Arizona and I thought I would surprise him by going to motorcycle school at Tidewater Community College out in Chesapeake. And I figured if I didn't pass, I wasn't going to tell him I tried. But if I passed, I would tell him. And of course I passed. And, and I told him. And he was, he was very excited. And he said, you know, when you move out to Phoenix, which would have been August of 2008, We'll see about picking picking up a, a used bike for you. He never was a believer in brand new motorcycles for new riders because invariably you were going to drop that bike. Not once, not twice. So went out there and I really wasn't quite comfortable with riding solo yet. So my first four years we did long distance touring and that's where I learned the rules of the road, defensive driving, how to sit properly on a motorcycle, everything you needed to know about riding. And then 2000, what was it? Uh, let's see, I, I purchased the Spider in 2013, so I would say 20... That's what you say here. 2012. Okay. And I did extremely well on that, although I did get off the center of gravity and drop that twice without it even running. I was just sitting on it and, and got off that center of gravity and you feel it and you just walk it over so that it doesn't crash down to the ground. Uh, although the third time I actually got cut off in a parking lot. Uh, probably the most dangerous place you can ride a motorcycle. And I was cut off in a parking lot as I was rounding. I was going this way and I had to lock the brakes. Either I was going to hit this car broadside, fly over it, or just lock it up and go down. And at seconds I was down. 
and bike was laying on top of my leg. I was fine. Reached up, cut the engine off, and the next year, 2013, I moved up to a 700. It was a Honda. Uh, and I did, did fine on that. I only dropped that once, and that was I was pulling away from a gas pump, and it, it was pretty tight, and I had just started to throttle when a guy came quickly into the gas station and I should have just kept going but I didn't I just slightly put the brakes on and I felt I was off that center of gravity and I just walked it over um, but luckily with with the bigger bike actually I, I really didn't drop it that was the only time that ever happened I did find my I didn't have the mental motorcycling that I needed for a two-wheel I anticipated road conditions I you know in Phoenix, uh, Arizona, out west, there's a lot of dirt driveways, a lot of graveled parking lots, and I found myself nerved by that. Although, I talked to many an experienced rider, and they all say the same thing. I don't like, they don't like it. No one likes it. No one likes riding in gravel. No one likes it. And then as we were doing long distance you have construction zones um, even so much as soft rocks and then you ran into weather conditions like hail i mean that's like riding with marbles all over the road and i wasn't having a good time i just was not enjoying it because i anticipated things before they ever happen or maybe didn't happen and so the next year I thought, well, what if I rented a Can-Am Spider to see how I felt about it? And, and the reason I chose the Can-Am Spider is because in my research I found that the trikes turn over too easy. And I felt like the Can-Am was the safest option for me. I can't speak for anyone else. It was the safest option for me. So I rented one and we did a long tour. Um, absolutely loved it. Came home and bought my very first Can-Am Spider. And you bought it new, correct? It was brand new. It was a year old, but it was still on the showroom floor at Jacksonville Sports in uh, Jacksonville, Florida. And I had it shipped to Phoenix and I absolutely love it. Very cool. Now you mentioned that you've done quite a bit of touring. Where are some of the places that you've been? I have toured the entire West. I've been Arizona, New Mexico, Utah, Colorado, Montana, Wyoming, South Dakota. I've toured the entire Pacific Coast about three times now. Uh, I've been into Canada three times, British Columbia. Uh, this past summer it was actually a, a three-week tour and uh, normally we go to uh, Alberta and we go to Lake Louise and Waterton and uh, but this past summer uh, I actually went to Whistler for the first time which was really nice um, there's a pass in uh, Alberta called Kananaskis Pass beautiful beautiful pass beautiful so yes, I, I, this is the first time I have had my spider here on the East Coast, so I'm not really sure where to go. So I'm hoping to, to learn those options from friends of mine who ride. I do know that even when I was living in Phoenix, I had Maine on my bucket list. So at some point I would like to ride up to Maine. I've never been uh, to that part of the country. Cool. And you said uh, in your summary that you sent me, you're averaging about, when they're touring years, uh, maybe 5,000 miles a year in traveling? Uh, yes, yes. So? Uh, one, any, usually in the, we do 800 miles, we were doing 800 miles every Easter weekend, mm -hmm. uh, riding round trip from Phoenix to Oceanside, uh, California. Do you have uh, a pace that you use, uh, an estimated 
your average mileage per day when you ride for touring? We'll ride anywhere from 350 to 500. Miles a day? Right. Uh, if we, you know, the times that we would uh, ride the west, Durango, Colorado is one of my favorite, favorite destinations. Love Durango. So from Phoenix to Durango is about 500 miles. With the first day that you take off on a tour, you're pumped. Yeah. You have the most energy on that first day. So what we would do is we would, in one day, we'd do the whole 500 miles and get to Durango, and that gave you a head start. But normally, it's 350 to 500 miles a day. Grant you, we leave early in the morning, it's not hardcore riding. We stop at the battlefields. We stop at all the, you know, different destinations and, and we have a great time. We stop and eat. You know, it's not just riding 500 miles and never stopping except to gas. Uh, we're visiting a lot of places, so. Cool. Do you plan your trips out in detail or do you sort of like have a target list of places you want to go and sort of wing it? Or do you have an itinerary for each day? How do, how do you do your planning? You don't want to wing it. Okay. Uh, again, I cannot speak for anybody else, but you do not want to wing it. So we had a mapping program. Um, he would put it on the map, how many miles we were going to go, um, and then share it with the rest of the group if everybody was in agreement because some people want to see this destination that you didn't have on there so we try to all be in agreement and uh, and then once you know that and you know how many miles you want to do every day then you make your hotel accommodations okay uh, we did not camp for the simple fact that a long day's ride you want a hot shower and a comfortable bed to sleep in at night. So we were not campers. <laughs> uh, we, you know, we would leave first thing in the morning. We always got to our destination by, you know, five, six o'clock in the evening. You put, you check into the hotel, park the bikes, you come out and you clean the bikes up, cover them, go in, take a hot shower, go have a nice dinner, nice drink, come back, relax until the, the next day food on the road do you do you take your own eat at restaurants or a mix of the of the two? Oh no we eat at restaurants okay that's the fun part yes it is yes. Uh, you know we might stop you know we might normally let me put it to you this way we normally stay in the hotels that have the free breakfast the next morning yep so and then you have breakfast and then you hit the road. And then for lunch, you know, you never know, you might pass some cool looking little restaurant that looks like a dump and it can turn out to be the best food you've ever had. Absolutely, that's been Mark's, our experience too. We always the shoot for that. Best food you can ever have. Yep. Um, or we'll stop at a McDonald's, mm -hmm. you know, for a quick bite. Uh, dinner time, it was, you know, whatever's walking distance to the hotel. Now, sometimes we would, we would stay, like when we went to uh, Canada, we would stay for a couple of days. So the bikes would stay parked for a couple of days. And we actually enjoyed our vacation. So we didn't always ride every single day. Right. Sometimes we'd go certain places and we'd stay two nights so that we could enjoy it. You know, like when we went up to Sturgis, we wanted to stay a couple of nights. Right. Cool. Well, we've answered all the, most of the questions on my list, and before the weather blows us out, do you have anything else you would like to add? No, I look forward to getting together with other spider riders, um, especially you and Miriam. We're doing one tomorrow. We're I, going to a winery. Yes, I look forward to that. I Actually, going across the Chesapeake Bay Bridge is, I can, write, I can check that off my bucket list. That's um, a hoot. So, well, we're going to go ahead and call it a, a, a wrap before we get drowned. All and right. It's been good talking to you. And you we'll too, see John. You tomorrow. All right. Thank you.
If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you don't like it, give it a thumbs down. And don't forget to subscribe. Feel free to leave a comment below.